This is Edge of Sports on the PPI Network with your host, Dave Zyre. It's been a long time. Long time. Radio returns. Here's Dave Zirin. Boom, we're back here on Edge of Sports Radio and Jeebus Plebus. We are listening to Rock Him, part of the legendary duo Eric B and Rock Him, just rejected for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in their first year of eligibility. A sign, if you needed one, that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is an incredibly illegitimate institution. Also rejected this year, War, one of the greatest groups of all time. I mean, just, just profound ignorance as they continue to induct every single group that ever ripped off the Beatles. This is Edge of Sports Radio. I'm Dave Zirin. Our next guest is the author of the new book, Cuban Star, How One Negro League Owner Changed the Face of Baseball. He knows more about the intersection of baseball and Latin America than anybody I've ever met. And given the news in baseball this week, he seemed like the right person to talk to. His name is Adrian Burgos. Adrian, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Very, very uh, excited to talk about Bullholes and everything else that's been flying through the air this last couple of days. <laughs> so, like, I mean, reaction one, please, because, I mean, I was one of those people who said, okay, the Marlins will flirt with him, the Cubs might break the bank for him, he'll end up in St. Louis, and then out of nowhere come the Angels. What were your thoughts when you heard about the deal? Artie Moreno. He made his millions and perhaps even billions of dollars in advertising. And I was like, this is a typical Artie Moreno move. That's the Angels owner. The, the Angels owner. You know, this is a way that Artie thinks he can use Albert's prominence as a ball player to reach into Latin America, into the U.S. Latino market, and recoup all the money he's going to be paying Albert. And so mm-hmm. why not go for the very best first baseman we've seen in the last 50 years? And, yeah, I mean, I was like, I was stunned uh, just knowing that Albert was going to leave St. Louis. But, yeah, it totally made sense that, that Artie. And on the other hand, you know, I'd much rather ha- see Pujols playing for uh, Artie Moreno than for Jeff Luria. Yeah. The liar, the schemer, the guy who stole all the money from the, Unbelievable. Uh, the schools in South Florida so that he can have everybody pay for his stadium. No, Unbelievable. much better to go to, to, to La La Land. Yeah, and let's talk about um, Artie Moreno for a second. Uh, the only owner in all of Major League Baseball who's of Chicano descent. I think he's like a third, fourth generation American. Is that right? Right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's not like he's uh, he's an immigrant success story, but still, he's a person of Latino, I believe, Mexican descent. Yeah, um, indeed. Uh, do you think that could become or that is a selling point for, well, for I, players interested in, in loss? Do you think that could have been one? I, I think that that Arnie definitely knows the, the where Albert's coming from. And, and that is, you know, Albert himself, his family migrated from the Dominican Republic to the States when Albert was a teenager. And he knows what it means to be respected for what you have achieved. Because Artie himself had to fight his way to get that kind of stature in the sporting world and in the business world. And really, this is what ultimately came down to between Pujols and the St. Louis Cardinals. Will they treat me... With more than the respect of your typical employee, you know, and that is, Albert's not your typical employee. You know, when he saw, and, and you know, this goes back a couple of years, when, when Pujo saw Matt Holliday, who has absolutely no history in St. Louis, be treated by management like royalty and given the bank, and how Albert wasn't taken care of first, he saw that management you know, was in a certain sense disrespecting him. Here you have the guy who's been in the organization since day one, who's a great citizen of St. Louis, who, in terms of well, the charity work, and we don't have to agree where he, you know, where he stands with mm-hmm. politics and stuff. You know, in the in the eyes of St. Louis, he was a good citizen ball player. Let me ask and, you this, because the the interview we had on before you was Scott Rabb, author of The Whore of Akron, One Man's <laughs> uh, Journey for the Soul of LeBron James. How, and I asked him if he, he said, I asked him, is Albert Pujols the whore of the Dominica? Like, is this just like a something that you would apply to any player who leaves the hometown fan, so to speak? And I'll ask you the question in a bit of a different way. How betrayed should St. Louis fans feel today, and who should they be angry at? You know, 
I think they should be angry at management because without Albert, the, the, there's no way the Cardinals win a World Series. Yeah. And one could say they won a World Series without Matt Holiday, and basically last year they pretty much won it without Holiday too because mm-hmm. he was injured much of the postseason run. And really, they were a magical postseason run last year, mm-hmm. and that was – because they had Albert Pujols, so they're, they're, they I don't know betrayed should be the right word. They should feel dissatisfied mm-hmm. about how management set its priorities. They should have taken care of Albert. It should never have come to this. And when you really think about it, when you know Billy DeWitt and the other owners who run the St. Louis Cardinals, when they have as much money as they do, it should not have come to this. In the end, the, the team made a financial business decision. We're not going to give Albert everything he wants. Albert saw this. And so this was just – would they rather? Would St. Louis fans rather have a, a bitter Albert Pujols who after two or three years might then start saying, you know what, Get me why don't you here. just trade me? Mm-hmm. You know, Albert made a clean break. Well, kind of. But, he, he, yeah, he headed out west, and he's going to – He's gone to a team that that needs him and, mm-hmm. and that wants him. And most of all, for an owner, he feels has given him the ultimate respect. He's made him the highest paid first baseman in the land. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's interesting, though, because um, the, the issue that, that, I, that I keep coming back to in my head is about uh, Pujols feeling disrespected and the respect for Matt Holiday and doing – a, a, a kind of ethnic, if not racial, read of that. And, I mean, we know the ownership of St. Louis, very conservative. Uh, we know that Tony La Russa was in many ways Albert's patron. Tony is gone. Did you put any kind of read into that, that if Albert Pujols was named uh, George Washington Smith, actually that sounds like more of an African-American name, if his name was, <laughs> <laughs> if his name was Matty Holiday Jr., um, would, does this play out differently? You know, uh, I think in a certain sense, yes, because as I wrote in Playing America's Game. Fantastic book, by the the way. These Latino players at a certain level cannot escape the Latino element of how people perceive them. Mm -hmm. Fans wanted Albert to give them, to give the Cardinals another. Um, hometown discount for him to express the ultimate loyalty to the team and its owners versus to his family himself and the almighty free market capitalist system that runs baseball. You know, so they want him to act differently. You know, how many people were upset in Oakland and prior to that, you know, with Matt Holiday in Colorado because he basically forced the Rockies and the A's his hand and ultimately went for the big dollars. That I say again, Holiday had nothing that the St. Louis Cardinals owed him, and they opened the bank for a player who's a gr- good to great hitter and a hard outfielder. You know, and and you know. Pujols, because he's Latino and there's a story of pulling yourself up by the bootstraps, and people fell in love with the entire narrative, and they want him to be the old-time loyal player, you know, like a usual, but usual didn't have a chance to leave. That's not the way the system was structured in baseball back then. That's the way it is now. Um, they, they, you, players do have the option, and this is why I put it in the laps of of management. They're the ones who allowed this situation to take place. But they, you know, they're, they get away with something that's really interesting. They, get, they allow the fans to be mad at Albert. Mm. Because, you know, they, now all of a sudden, St. Louis is again a small market team. We can't afford, even though they, they draw easily yeah, it's ridiculous. Three, million dollars, uh, 3 million fans a year. You know, they're, they're a big market team in a small market kind of thing because they're the tradition, they're, they're the whole marketing scheme of the St. Louis Cardinals is not small market. Well, you know, well. in terms of how they're able to reap in the dollars and everything. And the other fascinating thing is they made a business decision to let go of the biggest 
draw that they have. So I, I'm really interested in where they go from here. You know, they, they, had, well, they could have made so many different decisions to get to this point. The new manager they hired with no field managing experience. You know, it goes on and on. And, and I don't know, and many people say that Bujols and Jose Kindo don't have a lot of uh, affinity for one another. I don't know both of these men that way in, them, in terms of their relationship. But they saw how Kindo has been a loyal— Adrian, we got to hit a hard break, buddy. I'm sorry. All right. I get the point, but let, let, we'll continue the discussion, okay, buddy? All right, let's do it again, man. Well, very soon. You better believe because we got to talk Minoso. Hey, that was Adrian Burgos. you got to get his book, Cuban Star. You hear him talking. He's, he's amazing. Uh, also, Scott Rabb's book, Horror of Akron. I recommend reading it. Despite my disagreements for Edge of Sports Radio, I'm Dave Zirin. We are out of here. Peace. This is PPI. Breaking news, in-depth coverage, unparalleled access to professional athletes, pro player insiders, with your host, Dave Zirin. Get more unparalleled access to pro athletes directly from the source. Tune in next week for another fresh edition of the show or anytime at ProPlayerInsiders.com. 